This is Tara Grenovd with the Grounding and Growing Leadership Podcast, powered by Align, and this is episode 22. Trust is foundational to any high-performing team, but when trust is lacking, we are floundering. Communication is harder, collaboration takes longer, performance and culture suffer. Trust is key, and yet it's tricky, isn't it? Trust is hard to define and even harder to discuss. In today's episode, we outline a fantastic framework for understanding, talking about, and building trust on your team. Welcome to the Grounding and Growing Leadership Podcast, where everyone is a leader and leadership starts with you. I'm Tara. And I'm Pamela. Thank you for listening and inviting us along on your leadership journey. Hello, Pamela. Hello. So good to see you. How are you doing? I'm getting over a sinus infection. So those of you listening, you will hear that probably in my voice today. And we will try and edit out any coughs that end up popping up. We can do that as we edit it. (laughs) Yes, we can. What she really means is that Pamela can, because Pamela is our editor. If you didn't know that Pamela is a Jane of many talents and trades Mm. And, and she can do it all. She's a Sarmi knife for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness for those of you that are in the beginning stages of doing anything. We always say we are practicing. What I love is that we are getting into the middle twenties of our episodes and, yeah. and just a lot of listenership. So eventually as you all share our podcast, as uh, we get a little bit more traction in all the places, we'll have someone else do the editing. And I will say, hallelujah, please do. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's hard have, to edit yourself. <laughs> we have uh, some listenership goals before we can do that. So I want to just say thank you to those of you who do listen regularly. That's a commitment. I have a couple of podcasts I listen to regularly and Love that. And we feel honored that you would spend that time with us every week. So thank you to, to those of you who do. And of those who just drop in when the topic is interesting, that's great too. And if this is your first time listening, welcome to the grounding and growing leadership podcast. Today, we are going to talk about something. Actually, we just were talking, we couldn't believe that we haven't done this yet, this podcast yet, but we're going to talk about the most essential element for any team if you want any team to thrive, we have to yeah. talk about trust. It's completely essential. And it's trust with the team and also trust with yourself and how you show up for the team as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we use at Align, we use the Thin Book of Trust by Charles Feltman to give us a framework for trust. And so we're going to be using that today. That's only 80 pages. So I always say, you can do this. Even if you're not like a business book reader, you can read the thin book of trust. It reads more like a handbook, like a how-to. It's great. Pamela, before we dive into the framework and helping people understand, let's just talk a little bit about why trust is so essential and how we know when we might have some trust issues on the team. If we're in a space where we are questioning um, someone's integrity or their intent, very difficult to understand motivation for someone else. But if, if we're in a place at all where there's, there is a wall between you and me, I don't have a healthy boundary. I've got a wall. Then I have shut down a place in my brain of creativity. I've shut down being able to connect with you on a human level. And so my curiosity then gets shut down to consider the things that you're saying. And so it's very important that there is trust either established, built, or given to the people that you are on a team with. And the tricky part is that, first of all, teams don't want to often admit that there's a trust issue on a team because I like that person. And that person's a good person. So of course I trust them, but I just have to say liking someone and trusting them are two different things. Mm, And for a lot of us, it's hard for us to separate those two things out. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll tease that out in a little bit, but you can really like someone and still not trust them in certain aspects of work, but then we don't deal with it because we don't want to create disconnection or more tension or more challenge because we don't trust ourselves to deal with it. Yeah. And I think in the space where you are located in Minnesota, 
there's a saying that says Minnesota nice, which Tara has coined is just Minnesota fear of conflict, conflict avoidance, that when our personhood wants to like someone, but in a certain area, they are not trustworthy. And so this is where I think it's going to be really important to get into what Charles Feltman talks about these four quadrants of trust, because you may hear from your leader, I don't trust you, or this is not trustworthy or in a relationship, because this comes into the aspects of relationships that I counsel all the time. One person will say, well, I just don't trust you. And they're saying one thing and the other person is hearing something totally different. So could you bring us, Tara, to the four quadrants of trust? Yeah. Yeah. As you said, so trust is this, I always say squishy yet triggering word. So squishy in that it's hard to define and everyone defines it a little differently. Yes. And triggering in that as soon as you bring up that, I'm not sure I trust someone or it's triggering. So what do you mean? I don't, you don't trust me. That is core. We identify as a trustworthy person. Yeah. And can I just say too, you said triggering and what happens in our brain when we hear those words, I don't trust you is I'm putting my hands over my mouth right now. Is it, you get this really weird thing. Your brain goes foggy. You go into fight or flight when you hear those words. And so it's actually one of the worst things that you can lead with in a conversation because our body shuts down after that. Our brain goes foggy. We have just lost the ability to hear anything else that you are saying after it. So manager and leader, it is um, really important that you understand what these four kind of quadrants of trust are, because it will give you language that will help not hijack the person that you're leading. And even more helpful, we have a whole curriculum we take people through called grounding and trust with a team and really helpful to give common language for your team. So your team all can talk like this and all understand where this language is coming from and easy to do again, because this is a a pretty easy to grasp book. So here's the framework. There are four distinctions of trust and I'm going to quickly walk through them and then Pamela let's unpack them. But the first is reliability. Do you follow through? Do you do what you say you're going to do? The second is sincerity. Do you mean what you say and say what you mean? The third is competence. Do you know what you're good at and know what you still need to learn? And are you honest about that with yourself and others? And four is care. Do you take into consideration my needs when you're making decisions so that I know you care or are showing care about me? So those are the four distinctions of trust. So here's the thing. There isn't a person out there who would say, I'm not trustworthy. Most people identify themselves as trustworthy. And so you look at those four categories and most people even there would say, yeah, I can do all of those. I do all of those. Yeah. But we get in our own way and we get in our each other's way of being able to deliver in those four areas in a number of ways. So let's dig into them a little bit. And even before we do that, can I just say what the definition of trust is? Oh, please. So this is from the thin book of trust. Trust is choosing to risk making something you value vulnerable to another person's actions. So let me say that again, choosing to risk making something you value vulnerable to another person's actions. And then distrust is what is important to me is not safe with this person in this situation or any situation. As I have worked with just a lot of people in various coaching spaces, but also relational spaces, I've shortened that to say, I'm choosing to make what is valuable to me, vulnerable to you. Mm, So good. So if you think about that in business, sometimes the things that we find valuable to us are the work that we're doing Mm -hmm. or our business or the outcomes. And we're making that vulnerable to the team, to the people who are delivering. So the people that we are working with, it's Mm -hmm. like a big group project (laughs) Yeah, and we have to find ways to trust each other so that we can do it together. Otherwise uh, you're making a lot more work for yourself and everybody else. In that area of something that is valuable to me. So let's start with the area of reliability. 
as a leader, maybe having a conversation with someone on their team and they have looked at a deadline that has been missed. First of all, they could say, Hey, I noticed that this deadline hasn't been checked off yet. Can you tell me where that project is? And that person is behind or whatever. And you're able to then say, you know what? This isn't really like you. I have experienced you to be very reliable with deadlines before. And so could you tell me what's going on? So we're looking underneath the surface. The tip of the iceberg behavior is that they missed a deadline, but then you're able to go back and say, in this area, if other deadlines are missed, it it rises up within me that this valuable deadline is vulnerable to you. And in that vulnerability, I'm questioning whether I can trust your reliability to get it done. So we're speaking directly to the reliability there, which is helpful. You're not questioning who they are as a person. You're questioning their reliability. Yeah. And where this gets tricky, where this breaks down in most teams is communication, clarity of expectations. So if you are working with some people who have, for example, high responsibility, so I'll bring strengths into this as well. Mm -hmm. They might think it's obvious what needs to get done. Mm -hmm. And so we had a conversation It was clear to everybody what should get done, even though we didn't say it explicitly, we didn't explicitly say how it was going to get done, what done looks like. So as an organization, how are you at being really crystal clear after a discussion of here's what's expected, here's who's doing what, and here's the deadline, here's what done looks like. How many times listeners, have you been in a meeting where someone said, oh, I did that. And you're like, clearly you didn't because it's not on my desk or I haven't seen it. And, and what they thought done look like was completely different than what you thought done look like, Mm -hmm. would look like. Yeah. And then now, oh, now I'm not sure I can trust that person. They say they do stuff, but they don't actually do it. Yeah, absolutely. Which isn't true. It just means they may be potentially misunderstood. And often when I'm working with leaders or managers and they say, oh, this person isn't reliable or doesn't follow through, or I can't trust them with these things. We dig in and and examine, have they really been clear? Are they really communicating well? Yeah, and this is where we go back to Brene Brown's quote all the time, that clear is kind. I want to just hop in quickly and go to the sincerity piece. I know I've experienced this with some people and they use a terminology that, hey, this presentation was awesome or this speaker was great. And they use the word awesome. And then I'm in another situation with them where I've experienced something that in my view wasn't awesome, but I see this person showing up and saying, wow, wow, that was awesome. Or this project was awesome. And I'm experiencing something that is not sincere. I'm feeling like they are giving verbiage that is just pacifying. And so then all of a sudden, every single comment that person has made is disqualified. And I've disqualified them as a person because I'm not seeing sincerity in how they show up in saying the word awesome. Tara, have you ever had that happen? Sure. And I think we've all done it too, is when sincerity can be tricky because sometimes we want to just tell people what they want to hear. There it is. Yep. Or we don't want to have the deeper conversation. So we just skim over and we don't Mm -hmm. tell exactly what our perspective is, even if we've been asked. Yeah. And there's a lot of different contributing factors to this. So if you are highly relational, you might struggle with sincerity because you don't want to have the conflict and you don't want to create disconnection. For me, I have high communication and sometimes I think out loud. So what I tell you today might be different tomorrow because my brain has continued to evolve in the thought process <laughs> and I might forget to go back and clean that up and clarify. And it comes mm-hmm. up in the middle of a conversation. And I thought that I did sincerely have that conversation because we talked about it and mm-hmm. don't even realize that I actually landed somewhere a little different And on a team that can be really challenging. And so like Pamela, you and I have had to learn it happens sometimes and I'm, and I'll just apologize. And luckily there's some grace there that I've continued to process something and I've tried to get better at going back to clean it up. But if you're a leader who does that, that Mm. then calls sincerity into question. Can Mm. I trust that what you told me yesterday is what the actual thing is? Yeah. And my relator gets like really highly flagged there because I have such a a small 
trust box of people that are in the inner circle. And so we worked really hard at our communication and worked really hard at going back and just saying, oh, this is how I experienced this. But there are those that you don't have that relationship with that it can all of a sudden move someone outside of the circle. Yeah. So you could be conflict avoidant and struggle with sincerity. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons that you might struggle with sincerity. So even though you might be a sincere person, other people might experience you as less than sincere if they see disparity between what you've said and how you're showing up. And yeah, yeah, that's a challenge. And then we move into competence. This one is interesting. Do you know what you're good at? And are you able to say, I've got that because I know I'm good at it? And do you know what you're still learning or need to figure out? So you can say, I can do that. And it's going to take me longer, or the quality might not be what we need because it's going to be a learning process for me. Are you honest about where you are in your skills and abilities so that your colleagues can trust when you take something, they know that you know yourself enough to know whether or not you can deliver. You could say, I haven't learned that yet. It will take me this long because I'll need to develop that skill or definitely say I'm competent and I've got that. I think even where I see things with people relationally is that there will be a promise to do something or a promise to take the garbage out or whatever. And this is where it gets into the caring aspect of trust because then it could feel to the other person that you don't care about me because you're not seeing this thing. And so ultimately, you don't love me because you don't take out the trash. Yeah. And where this gets tricky with competence and assessing other people's competence is that we see the world through the filter of our own strengths and we overvalue and underestimate our own abilities. Mm -hmm. So if I'm really good at financial stuff, Mm -hmm. which I have to work harder at that than some, but if I'm really good at financials, for example, And in working with someone who I've seen struggle with it, I might then believe I'm not sure I can trust them with anything because that's easy. That thing that comes easy to me should come easy to them. And so now I don't know if I trust them with this other thing because I know I'm questioning their competence in every area. Mm. So that's called the dimness effect. It also, there's also a reverse. There's a brightness effect where, man, they have a skill I highly value and, and I know maybe I'm really good at it or not, but I really highly value that thing that they're good at. And Mm -hmm. so I'm going to give them everything, even though there's clear evidence that they're not good in other areas. Mm -hmm. I see this happen a lot with high performers who get promoted into leadership. Yes. They've shown no actual managerial or leadership qualities, but they're good at their job. And so now Mm -hmm. they've been, they've been promoted. I would just say the, the platform effect as well. Because this person Mm. is a star or a platform or has all of that, that all of a sudden this brightness elevates them to a completely trustworthy person because they are on stage or capable of doing everything because they are there. The reality is that they probably have a team that has helped them get there. And so they've got various levels of people of checks and balances to make sure that platform or that brightness shines as bright as it can. This also happens in interviews. So someone is really good at showing up confident in an interview and we think they must be competent and able in these other areas. And maybe they're just (laughs) really good at interviewing or maybe they're really terrible at interviewing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they wouldn't be good at the work that you need them to do. So we aren't always great judges of competence is the bottom line there. The last one is care. And this is the most foundational one is, do you care about me as a person? And will you take my needs into consideration when you're making decisions. This is foundational. I don't have to have a deep relationship with someone, but I do need to show up on a team and truly care about those that are around the table. Now that level of caring and what that might look like for me or for someone else that has been walking in the door for the first time, that is going to be different. It could be that, that we truly care about an outcome, maybe more because it reflects on me 
than because I care about you. But I also need to have a baseline level of, listen, we together are going to go further faster. And so I care that I know who you are as a human, not just that we complete a task or complete a project. So if I'm sitting at a table with you and you don't have any interest in who I am, my creativity, my trust, my level of your reliability, of your sincerity, of your capability, all of that gets undermined if I don't feel that you see me as another human created with value sitting around the table with you. I just experienced this in a relationship that I have with someone who struggles with listening and recently took time to listen and I felt so cared for. Wow. And, but it was one interaction and it, for me anyway, completely changed the trust dynamic for that relationship because they took some time to do it when I know it's something that they're not always great at doing. And, and so I want to encourage people too, that just even learning some listening skills as a leader can help you increase your care quotient. The other piece for leaders to keep in mind is you have to make hard decisions all the time. We Mm -hmm. have limited resources. We have to prioritize things. How you prioritize things is different than other people might, or that your team might, because they either have a limited view or they look at it differently. Even taking time to help them understand that you considered them and the impact on them, you considered their need. And here's why you chose something different will help them sometimes just to recognize they do care. And unfortunately, this decision impacts me, but it's not because this person doesn't care about me. I I love the way Andy Stanley talks about managing the tension around the table is that it truly is like this rubber band of tension. And we have these high quality leaders around the table who all are fighting for, for their time, for their project, for their team. And on any given day, Andy Stanley works in the nonprofit realm. And every Sunday they have a limited amount of time that they do the presentation. And there are certain things that get highlighted one week, certain things that get highlighted in another week. And that tension of being able to ebb and flow without let's say the rubber band of tension snapping is that ability for all of us around the table as high capacity leaders to recognize that as we manage the tension, that certain times the ebb and flow is going to lean one way more than the other. And that we're okay with that because we understand the greater purpose of what we're doing. And we understand that there is a, a team bond and trust between the people who are around the table. It's so important for teams to figure this out. And we don't take enough time. So the other kind of enemy of care on a team is time. We all feel time poor. Everyone's stretched to capacity. So taking time feels like a luxury and something that we don't really have time to do. So we need to find time to to show that we care. If you believe your team struggles with trust in any area, I promise that going through our trust program would be highly beneficial We take you through strengths. We make sure that you understand how your strengths impact all of this. And then, and then we take you through the curriculum and help you really find how to talk about this yourself on your team. What are the unique dynamics for your team and how do you build a language of trust for your team? We'd love to work with you on it. If it's something you're interested in, and if it's not, we highly recommend anyway, either way, picking up Charles Feltman's book, the thin book of trust worth the two hours it'll take for you to walk through it. So again, trust is making what is valuable to me, vulnerable to you. If you are not with people that you feel like you're able to have that vulnerability with, please reach out. We would love to help develop that conversation so that you can connect with one another. There can be clarity and communication. So thank you for trusting us and listening to this whole um, podcast on trust. We would look forward to hearing from you on other topics that you would like to see us cover. You can reach out at Tara at We'll see you next time. Come on.